The doctrine of conditional immortality is seen most clearly in verses like John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The eternal life is immortality and the condition for having immortality is to believe in Jesus. The doctrine of conditional immortality says that people will live forever only if they meet a condition, namely having faith in God. Those who do not have faith in God will not live forever. They will perish. Now, John 3.16 is one of many verses throughout the Bible that teaches or at least gives good support to the doctrine of of conditional immortality. These verses are found all throughout the Bible, uh, literally from Genesis to Revelation. But in this video, we are going to focus on the first chapters of the Bible. Let's look at what, uh, let's look at three ways that conditional immortality is taught in the opening chapters of the Bible. The tree of life teaches conditional immortality. Genesis 2.9, the Lord God caused to grow out of the ground every tree pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It is strongly implied that if Adam and Eve had eaten of the fruit of the tree of life, they would have lived forever. Thus, Adam and Eve had, before the fall, one type of conditional immortality. I believe that the tree of life was a literal tree, but more importantly, it was a symbol of Jesus through whom we can have eternal life. The tree of life is similar to all the lambs that were sacrificed in the Old Testament. They were literal lambs, but more importantly, they were symbols of Jesus who would die for our sins. John's Gospel is especially clear in showing how Jesus is our source of life and only hope for eternal life. In chapter 1, it says, In him, referring to Jesus, was life, and that life was the light of men. In chapter 1, for, Jesus says, but whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty again. In fact, the water I give him will become a well of water springing up in him for eternal life. So Jesus has become the source of eternal life if we trust in him. John 6.48, Jesus uses another image to convey the same truth. He says, I am the bread of life. And in verse 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. In John 11:25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. In John 14, 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God allows people to live for a while, giving them an opportunity to repent and come to faith in Christ. But without Christ, no one lives forever. Like Adam and Eve, our immortality is conditional. One way we sometimes emphasize a truth is to state it both positively and negatively. Example, I'm staying home tonight, I'm not going out. Which brings us to our next point. The warning and sentence of death also shows that immortality is conditional. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. If we don't live forever, then of course we are going to die. But to make sure Adam, and all of us, didn't miss this point, God spells it out. A warning. We must be careful not to jump to a metaphorical or spiritual meaning for die if the context supports a literal and physical meaning. 
People all around the world know what death is. Even children have seen dead animals. We know that death involves the loss of life and the loss of those characteristics uniquely associated with life, like consciousness and the ability to feel things and think about things. Many people assume that because the English translation of the text says Adam and Eve will die on the day they eat the fruit, and they didn't die on that day, but much later, this must mean that death here is metaphorical or refers to a spiritual death. I researched this in great depth and found five possible solutions, out of which only one requires taking die in a metaphorical or spiritual sense, and I don't think that one is likely correct. I shared the results of my research in a blog post that explains all five views. It's a complicated topic, and it doesn't fit in this short video, but you can go and look at this blog post if you desire. <clears throat> One reason to think that to die here refers to literal death, the loss of life, is that when Adam and Eve do eat the fruit and God declares the consequences, the one consequence related to death points to a very literal physical death. For you are dust, and you will return to dust. When we get to the New Testament, we see two final fates contrasted, eternal life and death, just like in the opening chapters of Genesis. So what fruit was produced then from the things you are now ashamed of? The outcome of those things is death. But now, since you have been set free from sin and have become enslaved to God, you have your fruit which results in sanctification, and the outcome is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the first chapters of the Bible, we see that God acted to prevent the terrible possibility of people living forever in a fallen state, a fallen condition, which brings us to point three. God acted specifically to prevent unconditional immortality for fallen humanity. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and live forever. Praise God, we now know that he has made a way where, through Christ, our sins can be forgiven and we can be transformed and once again have the gift of eternal life. But it has never been God's desire or intent to allow people in rebellion against him to go on living forever. That would be terrible. God plans to destroy the bodies and souls of the unrighteous in hell where they will perish and be torn to ashes. By his amazing grace that comes to us through faith in Christ, those who have believed in Jesus, and only those who have believed in Jesus, will once again have access to the tree of life and will live forever. None of this is consistent with the traditional doctrine of eternal torment, where the unrighteous live forever in hell in some type of torment. All of this is consistent with the biblical doctrine of conditional immortality, where those saved by faith in Jesus receive eternal life, and those who are not saved by faith in Jesus uh, perish. I pray that all who are listening to this will be among the group of people who are blessed. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. <laughs>